Whoops. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our housing information night. Tonight we have a special guest, Loretta Kale from Parkview Services that will um, share a little bit about the um, the organization as well as home ownership, home ownership and um, down payment assistance that they can offer for individuals and families that that we all can relate to. So um, go ahead, Loretta, do you need to be able to share your screen or oh. are you just going to Yeah. <laughs> we like that. Okay. That's right. I'm my own infograph. <laughs> well, great. Thank you. Take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Darcy. Thank you all for inviting me this evening. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Um, I come with a lot of experience in this field, and I'm so proud to be working with Parkview Services. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you have heard of our organization. We're pretty well known on the West Side. Uh, Parkview Services has been uh, established since 1967, so we just celebrated our 55th anniversary. We started with Stella Chivers, who uh, opened our first group home that is still in uh, in place today. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Miss uh, Stella just passed recently, so that was a big loss. But um, since 1967, we've grown in amazing ways. So in addition to the group home that we have in Capitol Hill, we also have 68 individual homes that we own and um, are operated as homes. Um, we don't call them group homes. We call them um, more of community living. So uh, where residents um, come together as people and pool their resources to pay the rent. And we provide the structure and um, the maintenance staff to keep the home in good operating order. And so uh, we're expanding that program this year. We just received three grants um, that we've been working on for a while. COVID really put everybody back, which everyone knows, but um, we were excited to hear that Commerce had awarded um, three of our projects to be funded in full. And so we will be expanding um, some of uh, the homes and we're also going to be doing um, some townhomes, and we uh, also are just trying to uh, work on some smaller placements for individuals where it's difficult for them to live in a group setting. So that's all very exciting. My role in this is I'm the director of home ownership. So in 2020, Parkview Services opened their Eastern Washington branch so that we could provide statewide coverage. So I'm able to work with every family, every household that has a, a disability um, toward their home ownership goals in whatever way that looks like for that uh, family or individual. So we offer um, at Parkview Services, we're a HUD approved housing counseling agency, uh, which is really important because we take a test just like the lender, just like the realtor. Uh, we're certified. So we provide guidance and counseling in a one-on-one -on -one format to make sure that each person is being heard and each individual in that uh, need is being met. Um, so that is very exciting that we're able to work statewide. Um, so what I do in my team is we provide two different sections of home ownership. We provide um, our pre-purchase side, which is exciting, and I'm so lucky that I get to uh, spend time there because you know it's always fun when somebody reaches that goal and or even just achieves one of their milestones, and I get to celebrate that with them. Um, I also have six full-time counselors that work in my default program, and that is geared toward helping people save their homes from foreclosure. So both are very important. In pre-purchase, we want to focus on affordability, sustainability. Um, we're not just here to help you get in the house. We're here to help you stay in the house. And so that's very, very important um, because sometimes after the fact of purchase, there's other things we can do to lower costs through tax exemptions or home maintenance projects. And so it's important to have housing counselor as a partner. Um, so in addition to the one-on-one -on -one counseling, 
Uh, I also provide home buyer education classes. So we do those on Saturdays. They're virtual. Um, so you write from your living room um, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So it's a five hour class. It's free, but it gives you a very, um, I think, a very good broad overview of everything that's available in the state of Washington, which is important. So you understand at the beginning of your journey, maybe what path you might want to follow. And then we can individualize your situation based on the knowledge you gain from the class. Uh, I also teach a financial capability class, which is geared more toward people that are just beginning the process of understanding their credit, their savings, um, how to be banked, how to live on a budget. Um, so that's really kind of the precursor to home ownership. It's a two and a half hour class that I teach in conjunction with Chase Bank uh, and First Security will be coming on in April. Um, but those classes are also on Saturday and they run from 10 to 1230. Again, they're virtual, they're free. Um, it's, it's an investment in yourself. It's an investment in the future uh, of your family, of your household. Uh, we call it creating generational wealth because if you don't invest in yourself, no one else will. And so it's a great place to start. So we found that just starting with the financial capability, sometimes we can get people ready to take on the home ownership piece. And so that when they are able to find something that fits where they want to live, that's in their um, affordability price range, that they're already ready. They're not just beginning the process. They're already at the point where they can be competitive. And so putting all of those tools together ahead of time is very important. And even if you don't end up buying a house, you have a credit score. You have a, a budget. You may have a savings account. Things in your life can change for the positive. And it seems like the snowball effect of one thing changing can create many things to change. So that is very exciting as well. Um, and the last thing that I do, but the, probably the most important in this current economic environment is to provide down payment assistance uh, for, again, individuals and households with an intellectual or developmental disability that in addition to being able to qualify for a first mortgage, we can layer $60,000 in down payment assistance at 0% interest that's deferred for 30 years or until you sell or refinance or relocate. Um, and then we can also partner with other nonprofits or with the Housing Finance Commission to add an additional 15,000, giving you a total of 75,000 to go towards your purchase. And let me tell you how effective this is. So we just closed on a house. Again, I'm statewide, so I can find pockets of opportunity for people that don't necessarily need to live next to where they work. But uh, working with a single gentleman, um, he himself has an intellectual and developmental disability, had been renting um, and wanted to purchase close to where he had been renting because uh, he was familiar with the services. And so he was able to, he did all the work, right? He took the financial class. He took the first time home buyer class. He worked with a lender that does these programs that understands how to layer down payment assistance. Not every lender is able to do this. They have compliance restrictions, secondary marketing restrictions. And so it's important that you work with somebody who not only understands the program, but uses it on a regular basis. And so we were able to get him with a lender. We worked on his pre-qualification. The whole process probably took eight months um, by the time that he was ready. Um, we had approved him for one price. He had found a home that was a little bit more. Came back, he had gotten a, a little bit of a COLA bump in 2023. So we increased his income, uh, he qualified him for about 6,000 more. He found a house, honestly, waiting doesn't always hurt. He found a house in uh, Okanagan County, um, actually in Okanagan itself, $168,000. It was recently remodeled, just cute as a bug, two bedroom, one bath. He's one block away from the library where he gets his internet, one block away from the grocery store. He's, he's with his 
community and the resources he's already familiar with. His first mortgage payment was $97,500 because we layered $75,000 in down payment assistance for him. He, his new mortgage payment is now less than $800 a month. That's less than what he was paying for rent. And in Okanagan County, after he's owned the home for six months, they uh, provide, because he's in um, in a 50% income bracket, honestly, 50% income bracket. Because he's that low of income, they waive the real estate taxes. So we're going to be able to, lay, uh, to lower his mortgage payment additional $75. He will be closer to $700 a month and he owns a home. So if anybody thinks it's not possible, it's not for me, I can never do it. I'm here to share that it is possible that I will be your biggest cheerleader, but I will also make you do the work. If you don't understand the value of giving yourself the greatest gift of home ownership, and you don't make that investment of time, energy, resources, then you're not going to appreciate it. And so we work as a team, you and I, your lender and your realtor, to make sure that you're the smartest person at the closing table, that you know everything that's happening, so it's happening with you, not to you, and that you walk away feeling empowered and proud of yourself for what you just did. And so I'm very excited about the work that I get to do. Obviously, I have a lot of passion for it. I've been doing this for over 40 years. I worked on the for-profit side for 20, over 28 years. So I understand all of it, right? I've been a realtor, I've been a lender, I've done all of that. Working on the nonprofit side gives me the opportunity to be able to guide you because I understand the process, but I also understand your specific need and your specific situation. So it's sort of the best of both worlds for me. I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity, but I wanna share it. I wanna make sure that everybody knows that this exists because a lot of people either come to me after they're already under contract, they're 15 days from closing, and there's no way that it's possible for me to help because I need a certain amount of time, right? It's not my money. I have to get the money from Commerce. I have to make sure all the boxes are checked, all the ratios are in line, home inspection passes, and then we can coordinate our efforts. So, letting you know of these resources before you begin the process, then it just works seamlessly. We literally closed the client that I just talked to you about in Okanagan in 31 days, 31 days. And we layered a first mortgage and two down payment assistance loans. So he had three different lenders coming together with his loan documents in 31 days. And it was because he was ready. And so it, it's just really important that put yourself first and have the conversation. It'd be, even if you think it's not possible, you don't know if you don't ask. Does anyone have any questions? Is there anything you'd like me to specifically talk about? I just kind of told you me, my program, and how I can help you. Yeah, I do have a question. Um, so you talked about the mortgage payment on the uh, gentleman in Okanagan. What about the payment for the down payment assistance loans? So the payments for those, John, are deferred. So they aren't due until you actually sell the home. So really, when you look at it, you're buying the same house for the same price, but what your mortgage payment is only on the first. So that's how we can help you make it affordable. If you don't buy it, you can never begin to grow equity. And so this is a way for us to open a door that maybe would never have opened for you. Um, because if you're not there doing it, uh, again, that equity that you could be growing um, and paying yourself versus paying a landlord, if down payment is the barrier to entry, we want to help overcome that. So yeah, there's no payment due on those loans 
uh, until such time as you no longer need that money. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the question would be the individual with intellectual disability. So let's talk about that. So my program is not designed to help uh, parents buy a home that they're going to have their child live in, maybe with um, a roommate or some other folks. That's considered an investment property. If your child is over the age of 18 and you're their legal guardian, then you can sign on their behalf and we can use their income as a part of the qualifying process. If they're not involved in the transaction, we're not able to use the income for qualifying, right? You can't use your neighbor's money to buy your house kind of a, of a thing. If your child is under 18, obviously they're already your guard. They're already their guardian and any income they receive, we could use. If you're going to live in the home with them, then it's considered a primary residence. And then that would work for all of these down payment programs that I'm talking about. Therefore, owner-occupied primary residences only. So they're not for you to buy a house for your children you're not going to live in or to coordinate four or five families coming together to pool resources. Again, that's considered an investment property. And so what I'm talking about isn't that. There are other things that you can do in that world that isn't where I live. I'm in the primary residence, owner-occupied only, um, uh, because that's where I feel like the most help is needed. Um, but again, if they're over 18, they don't need to sign any of the documents. If you're their legal guardian, we wouldn't expect that. So, but being able to use maybe whatever social security they get towards qualifying allows you purchasing power. And we all know, you know, what's going on with inventory, the more purchasing power you have, the greater the chances are you're going to find a home that's suitable, habitable, and in a community in which you want to live. Did that answer your question? I don't Loretta, um, uh, sorry, um, this is Darcy. You can also, people can also coordinate Section 8 housing vouchers with um, their mortgage, right? And Right. I'm okay. actually doing one in Spokane right now. Um, there's very few lenders that work with Section 8 home ownership. And we have to be careful when we talk about that. I get a lot of phone calls on this subject. And if you have a rental voucher, <coughs> excuse me, that is not the same. You have to get back in line for the home ownership voucher. They're very difficult to get. It's almost a lottery system. And if your number is called, you have a certain window in which to use it, typically six months. And so having done all this work in advance, then you would be ready for that. But it's up to the public housing authority to issue that it's called a housing choice. So when I talk about home choice, that's down payment. Housing choice is a Section 8 voucher that can be used toward the purchase. The benefit of that voucher is that it pays 50% of the mortgage payment for 15 years. So it's a great benefit. But unfortunately, too many people that receive it haven't done any of the work. So they don't have a credit score. They have no money of their own saved. They're not going to be able to qualify for a first mortgage. And it doesn't do me any good for you to have a voucher that's going to expire in six months because it's going to take you that long to be ready to buy a home. So again, just starting to do the work, regardless of whether you have that voucher yet, then when, if and when you're able to receive one, um, you'll be ready. But there are very few mortgage lenders that work with that program because of how it's underwritten, right? Because we have to count that subsidized payment against your debt ratios. And so it really takes sort of a community lender who doesn't sell their loans into the secondary market in order to use that. So I have a couple of lenders that I work with, um, but this is the first one that I'm working on since 2019. 
So the vouchers were basically frozen and are just now starting to be reissued. So this is going to become a conversation uh, going through 2023 and into 2024. We're going to start seeing more of these being rolled out. Which is great. They're sitting there, <laughs> not being used, but I can't change that hub. Was that your question, Darcy? Whoops, yes. And okay. then, are you seeing the chat? I was trying to let people in. We were having some difficulty getting some people in. And so I don't know if- I can't see the chat. I will read it to you then. Okay. okay. Um, is there a charge to get help with a home ownership process? Is there a chart? A charge. Oh. A charge. No, 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 no. <laughs> Would I be working at seven o'clock <laughs> on a Tuesday night if I was going to charge you for this service? Yeah. No, um, I do this with my heart. If you get some down payment from through housing finance, like the home toys, there is a $260 fee that is collected at closing. That is their requirement, not mine. Very small fee to pay for the amount of time that I will spend with you. But otherwise, I'm a resource, and that's what I'm here for. There is no question that I can't answer. That's the benefit of my 40-plus years of experience is that I can talk to you and help you understand things in such a way that it makes sense. So I'm not going to just speak to you in lender language or, you know, quote, contingency stuff. We're going to talk about what's real and what's not real. And you have to also work within that same realm of expectation. Um, I was finally able to get a gal qualified. I've been working with since 2021. Went through the whole process of getting her medical for her son. Finally got the diagnosis clear, ready to go into the program. She got a little bit of bump in 2023 for her SSA and his SSI. And then there's some child support. So we finally got her pre-qualified, had her credit score up, and believe me, there were some challenges. There were some elections and some credit challenges. She's finally able to get approved for a first mortgage, and her approval loan amount came in at two fifty, which I thought was great. I mean, that's options, right? Um, and and then she she kind of like gave up. She was like, "Well, I want to buy a house for three I'm not going to help you." do things that go against reality, which is sustainability and affordability. And eventually that child support will go away and she'll still have a 30 year mortgage. I wanna make sure that I'm doing the responsible thing. So what I, when I help you, I may not always give you what you want, but I'm going to help you achieve what's in your best interest. And you don't wanna lose home ownership. Like I said, I have a very robust default program. Do you think any of those people that are facing a foreclosure wanted to be in that situation? Nobody took the time to help them understand what a budget was, how home ownership works, that it's not like renting, that you are responsible for the utilities and the maintenance and everything that goes along with that. And so, um, so I, I was sad that she was disappointed because I was actually very happy for her. I'm hoping she'll take a minute and just, and maybe that was reactive, and I understand, and, and maybe we can work through that, and, and let's just see what's out there. You have to start somewhere. So if we start with the $250,000 house and build some equity, and we grow to the $350,000 house, but that's not where we start for, for everyone, but it's still better than rent because rent is 100% interest. You get nothing, zero not a, at a renting. And the reason you're successful too is because of the fact or, or that you're successful and the people that you're helping are successful is because you're not doing it for them. You're, they're involved in the process. And um, I will, I shared your contact information. Email is the best way to reach you. I'll share it yes. again before we leave. Um, we have more questions. Great. Um, would the individual with intellectual disabilities need to understand the process or just the guardian? So just the guardian. 
we're, you know, we're not unrealistic. Obviously, if, if you've got a child that is unable to attend the five hour class or sign legal documents, we don't want them in that part of the process. Your guardianship of your child allows you to sign on their behalf, which allows us to use their income for your qualifying. I mean, you're basically providing a stable residence for them to live in, in a community that they feel comfortable and safe. So, um, you know, we, we, we understand all of that. Okay. So the individual with IDD would buy a home. Can he have a caretaker live with him? You can have whoever you want live with you. That's the joy of home ownership. You can paint every wall, any color you want. You can have any roommate you want. You can have any caregiver. You're still responsible for that mortgage, irregardless. The caregiver isn't on the loan and none of the income would go toward that payment. But absolutely, it's that's the benefit of owning your own house. I mean, we have people that buy houses and then after they bring in some roommates and maybe they all pool their resources to cover the mortgage. Well, that's what you get to do because you're a homeowner. You get to make those choices. As long as you don't move out, you can certainly have roommates. Um, if your loved one is on a Section 8 wait list, how do we know if they are on the rental voucher wait list versus the housing voucher wait list? So you will know because you'll receive an indication. So the invitation to the Housing Choice Program is only extended after you've been a Section 8 renter for two years in most counties. So successfully rented for two years through the Section 8 program. They'll send you an invitation to attend a class. You must attend that class or you will no, no longer be on that in that line. So you go to a class and through that class, you're connected to resources that then begin the journey. So the first way that you know is that invitation. If you don't go to the class, you'll never get the voucher. Once you've attended that first class, then they start to work on whittling down how many vouchers are available, who's had the highest success rate in renting. There's different criteria each public housing authority uses, but it isn't a mystery. It isn't just gonna show up in your mailbox one day. You're going to have noticed that that's happening. And it, the minute that, that you become aware of that, you need to engage and begin 100% invested in whatever classes they need you to attend. Um, I know that because I teach one of them, uh, but yeah, it, they, will, they will contact you. Until then, you have a rental voucher, which be lucky to have right now because it's a three-year wait list for a rental voucher. Anybody else have questions? Mm. How do you get an appointment with me? Saw that one. <laughs> email me. Uh, email me. We can communicate that way. What I have found is that um, COVID changed everything, right? I now have the unfortunate situation of having people who maybe have never been a homeowner, maybe have a challenge through a disability, and they're being asked to sign 60 pages of documents on their phone with their thumb. It is a challenging world right now. Um, and so, but what I've also found is that nobody answers their phone anymore. Dang those scammers. They, they have caused people to just be gun shy of answering any calls. And so what ends up happening is we'll spend days playing phone tag and that's not productive. And so if you can email me and we can schedule a time, let me know what your specific questions are so the meeting we have together is productive. Um, then I, you know, then you're not just saying, hey, I wanna know this and this. And then I'm like, well, let me find out and call you back. I'll already have the answers you need ready. And it's just the best use of both of our time so that we're not delaying your entry into this process. The sooner we can begin, let's start with a, with a home buyer class or a financial class. A home buyer class, you get a certificate that's good for two years. So even if you're not going to be a homeowner for two years, at least you got that requirement out of the way. And that's one box we can check on that, on that list of things to do.
So did everybody see that I shared um, Loretta's contact information in the chat? Yes. It's a fairly easy one, Loretta at parkviewservices.org. And, um, and you can put our website up there too, if you want people can okay. read more about our programs. I did put it up there. So it's okay. um, parkviewservices.org. Yep. It's in there, yes. And that talks about all of the wonderful things we do within uh, throughout the state of Washington. And we're coming soon to Eastern Washington, Darcy. We actually have an affordable um, housing meeting with SEMA, and we're hoping to do a forum in August for being able to, our goal is to be able to build some of these homes in Spokane. Um, so, because there just are not enough homes available for people. So that, homes for purchase. For homes for purchase or nice. homes for uh, supported living, we're gonna be doing both. Nice. And by um, SEMA, everybody, SEMA is, um, SEMA Thorpe is the executive director of the ARC of Spokane. So um, we're working in conjunction with the ARC of Washington. And nice. so, yeah, so it's a really good partnership that we're, you know, we just don't talk a lot about this once you cross the Cascades. And I think it's a statewide issue and everybody should be having the conversation. There's some really good conversations happening around housing. I'm super excited. I feel like um. People are working together to tackle the issue and um, have realized some of the barriers that are out there and realize that there's a real issue that um, we want people to live in the community, but if there's no capacity for them to live in the community because right. there's enough houses, then, right. then where do they go? Yeah. And where do they go? And that's the problem. I mean, it's like, you know, maybe if I can help you mitigate a rent increase or mitigate your landlord selling your house, and your only other options are your car or Motel 6, because getting into a rental at a price that's affordable isn't just going to happen overnight. And so, you know, this is just one way you never, ever have to worry about that again. Well, I'd like to thank you, Loretta. This has been an absolutely informative <laughs> presentation and thank you Darcy for inviting her on to do this or whoever invited whom it's been really great and uh, uh, learned a lot and have some questions so yes I'll be emailing you and asking Perfect. for an appointment <laughs> wonderful look forward to it Suzette okay thank you you bet anybody else have any questions before Loretta leaves us mm -hmm. All right. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And hopefully we've generated a few different people that are going to pursue this and your assistance. And um, we know where to find you. And yes. oops, I see some, a new, new post before I let you go. Um, um, I'm sorry I missed introductions, but when people mention that person with a disability's income can be considered in a purchase, uh, Okay, let me make sure I. Um, the person with a disability income can be considered in the purchase of the home. Do you have to have guardianship of that person for it to be considered? Yes, if they're over the age of 18, um, the problem is, is that I can't use somebody's income who's not on the loan if they're a legal adult, unless you're their legal guardian and you could speak for their behalf. Um, it, that's just not, I mean, that's just not going to ever happen. We're just not going to be able to use the income for somebody who isn't involved in the transaction if they're a legal adult. Um, they can certainly live in the home, but we just wouldn't add that income into your qualifying ratios. So that's the benefit of, of having that guardianship piece. If your child is over 18, that we are able to include their income to increase how much of a house you can afford. Don't have to do it, totally your choice. If you don't need their income, then we won't even worry about it. But um, but if you are gonna use their income and they're over 18, then that is required. All right, well, thank All you right. so much, Loretta. And it was good to see you. You and too.